Good day, students. You are welcome to our E class. My name is Mrs. Mokena Agnes, and I'm here to teach you history. And um, our topic for the day is um, we're looking at Nigeria in the 19th century. The subtopic there is a Christian missionary activities in Nigeria. Now, what do we hope to achieve by the end of this class? First, you should be able to state the reason for the rise of missionary activities in Nigeria. Number two, explain at least two motives of the Christian missionaries. Then three, list some areas where the missionaries made impact in Nigeria. Now we begin to ask, why did we witness so much missionary activities in Nigeria in the 18th, late 18th and early 19th century? The reason is this. There was this religious and moral awakening in the Protestant countries of America. That was in the late 18th and early 19th century. The movement, that movement was known as the Evangelical Movement, and it was strongest in Britain. If you remember, I always say in class that Britain was the first country to abolish the slave trade. They got to a point where they now felt that the slaves were no longer needed. And as a result, they needed a replacement. But something was wrong. They needed first to appease these slaves, especially those of them in Africa, before any other thing would be done. So there was that need to carry out Christian missionary activities. Now, like I said, that movement was called, known as the Evangelical Movement. The movement produced the anti-slave trade movement and the slave, that anti-slavery movement had a strong desire to spread the gospel, especially to Africa, Asia, and even Europe. So the rise led to the formation of missionary societies that was in the late and the uh, late 18th century and early 19th century. So as I was saying, that evangelical movement led to the formation of missionary societies and like in England the Baptist mission was founded in 1798 then we also have the London Missionary Society that was that was founded in 1799 we have the British and Foreign Bible Society that was founded in 1803 we have the University Mission to Central Africa that was founded in 1875 also, the Protestant, Protestant Mission Society that was founded in Scotland, Germany, and Switzerland, and America. Then the Catholic also made impact. They founded the Catholic Missionary Society that was in France. We saw the activities of the Holy Ghost Father Society. Holy Ghost Father Society was founded in 1841. Then the Society for African Mission was founded in 1858 and the rest of them. Now, we want to look at the motives. What were the motives behind Christian missionary activities in Nigeria? The first one there is religion. Of course, when you say Christian missionaries, what comes to mind is religion, the Christian religion. So, their motive then, because the Europeans picture Africa in general, Nigeria inclusive, as a den of misery, wickedness, witchcraft, dissolution, all vices you can think of. They even said Africa is a white man's graveyard full of diseases and the rest of them. So there was this need to preach the gospel of Jesus Christ. That way they felt they wanted to rescue the souls of the blacks, the Negroes, so that the gospel will kind of change that scenario, change that view about the African continent. So their first, their primary motive was religion, to preach and convert the people to Christianity. Then the second motive there is humanitarian. When you talk of humanitarian, we're simply talking about the law for mankind, the law for, for your fellow human being. Like I said before, their consciences were stung by the role they played during the slave trade era. 
you, if I tell you what they did to, to us Africans during the slave trade, you will weep for us. So that thing was already there, and they felt they needed to come down to make atonement. And that way, they would totally eradicate slavery and the slave trade from the African continent, Nigeria inclusive. So humanitarian motive was there. They needed to stop the slave trade. And you know, of course, with most of the cultures in, the, in, in Africa, Nigeria, you talk about the killing of uh, twins, Huh? You sometimes they, they use people for ritual during burial ceremonies and all that. So, so to the white man, all these are barbaric. They are barbaric. They are no good culture. So the desire to stop them, especially the slave trade and slavery, was there. So humanitarian motive was part of it. Then the third one is economic. Like I said, most of the missionaries they are product of industrialized nations. I said earlier that Britain, the desire to preach the gospel started, that, that strong desire was in Britain. Why? Because she was the first country to abolish the slave trade. When the slave trade was abolished, they didn't have need for the slaves anymore because the, uh, there was the industrial revolution, of course, and that was the invention of machines and all that. So these machines replaced the slave labor. So, like I said, they are, these missionaries were they are product of industrialized nations, especially Great Britain. So they needed to trade with us, trade with the people of Africa, trade with us in Nigeria. And the industrial revolution, I should say, caused a lot of problems. One, like I said, they had machines, and these machines produced a lot of goods that they could not consume in Europe. And there was a need for raw materials. Of course, they would get them from the tropic, and Nigeria is in the tropics. So they needed these raw materials. So what did they do? They have to come down to us to you know, carry out legitimate trade. So economic consideration was also part of the motives why the missionaries came. Then we talk about the last one there, which is political. And I will say that they are also backed up by political desire because there is no way you go to a place, you just want to feel free there without having that, that desire, that urge to control the people. So there was that need for them to control us in order one, to effectively preach the gospel, secondly, to carry out their legitimate business, no longer the trade in human beings or human cargoes. So now, for them, for the environment to be conducive, they needed to control us. So political motive was also part of the Christian missionary activities in Nigeria. Okay, so as I was saying that um, religious motive was also part of it, that they were backed up by religious motive. Most times they have to invite their home government to help apply force where necessary to take over that particular place. A case like that happened in Lagos when it was obvious that the reigning Oba of Lagos then, um, King Kosoko, was still actively involved with the Brazilian slave dealers or traders. They had to invite the British government to come and use force so that they can carry out their Christian missionary activities. So, that's for their motives. Then we want to look at the impact. What impact did they make after all this? We'll start with the religious impact. Like I said, their primary motive was to preach the gospel. Every other thing is just a, an addition. So they were able to plant Christianity in the heart of Nigeria. And today, we can attest to that, that they did a good job. You know, today there's that love for your fellow human being. At least when there's a problem, you can pray for your brother. You can show love because that's what the Bible says, that we should love one another. They've been able to plant that in our hearts. Then their preaching or the establishment of Christianity was made possible through the establishment of churches. So 
we first and foremost we saw the CMS, Christian Missionary Society, they were able to establish missions in Abeokuta through the missionary Harry Townsend and Reverend Samuel Ajayi Crowder, an ex slave that later became the first African bishop. And that they, they were able to establish missions there in the year 1846. Then in Lagos, they established missions too in, in, in the year 1853. Then in Oyo in 1856. Then Walter Miller also established in Zaria in the year 18, sorry, 1902. Then in 1842, Thomas Freeman of the Methodists opened a mission at Badagri and Abelkuta. In Abelkuta, it was opened in 1848. Then we also saw Thomas Bowen Jefferson of the Southern Baptist Mission of America. He opened a mission in Ijaye, that was in the year 1852. Then he also extended it to Obomosho, that was in 1855. Now, this Church of Scotland mission was not left at what today they call the Presbyterian Church. They also made their impact through uh, Reverend Hope Wardell. That was in 1846. They opened a mission in Duke and Creek towns of the uh, Cross River areas. So today we say Calabar. So, and we also saw the role of uh, um, Reverend um, Mary Slesso. She played an active part. She stopped the killing of twins and fought against the exclusion of widows, forcing them to go through some rituals during the death of their husbands or during the burial ceremony. So the Christian missionaries really made an impact in terms of a religion. As I was saying, the Roman Catholic mission was not left out. They also played their role. We have the people like Father Botch and Brother Martinez. They also find, founded their first mission in Lagos, that was in 1868. Then also in Abeokuta in 1880, in Onicha in 1885, then in Nkwere in 1818, then Aguleri in 1890. We also want to look at another impact that is in the area of education. That was their greatest and most spectacular achievement that in the area of, uh, that's in the field of education. They established schools. First, they began with the establishment of a printing press. That was in 1859. We saw the role of a uh, Reverend Townsend. We saw the role of Reverend Townsend there. He brought the first printing press to Nigeria. And they also established the first newspaper called the Way Heroine. They also built schools, primary, secondary, teachers training colleges, craft centers. Then the first grammar school was established by the CMS. That was in Lagos in 1859. Then we saw the first secondary school for girls. That was in 1868, also in Lagos. There's the Hope Wardell Institute. We have the Methodist Boys High School. There were so many established all over the country. So they made remarkable achievements in the area of education. And I think we are still benefiting. We still have some missionary schools. And I know that most great men in Nigeria today pass through missionary schools. So we give kudos to them. I hope you enjoyed our class and you paid, you were very attentive. You got everything. So. For your assignment, you have this. One, you state two motives of the Christian missionaries in Nigeria. Two, list five missionaries that worked in Nigeria in the 19th century. I hope to get your answers back, send them to the platform, and I will read them and mark them. So I want you to stay safe, follow the guidelines for this COVID-19, and return back to school safely. Love you guys.